Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to talk you through the process of me gunsmithing my Tika. Here we're breaking the action apart from the barrel, going ahead and removing it after we've taken it out of the Tika stock, of course. Here's a quick look at the action. It's uh, pretty stout, it's made of solid steel. Now here we're going to open up the bolt face of the bolt because I went from a 243 to a 7WSM we have to actually open up the bolt face to allow it to hold the larger cartridge head. The Tika had very little run out just clamping it straight into the vise. Uh, the gunsmith remarked that it was actually amazing how good it was compared to something like a Remington. So here we're putting a little bit of a crown on the barrel. 11 degree target crown as per my reference. Preference. Open it up a little bit more Taking a look at uh, kind of how the gunsmith runs his lathe, it's got a lot of really fine adjustments you can make. And you can see on that screen there, it actually tracks exactly where you're at on the lathe. And as you move the cutting head around, it'll tell you to like the 10,000th of an inch. Now this little dial indicator tells him when he needs to stop the machine. So it'll actually follow through from the right to the left and it will move its way down to cut something smooth or cut threads into it. It's part of the machine. And as that dial indicator goes back around, right around zero, he cuts it and uh, stops it from moving forward. So this little nozzle that's spraying on here actually is a combination of compressed air and oil, and that's to keep everything smooth and lubricated while it's cutting. Here's a quick look at cutting some threads. This is on the muzzle end of the rifle. I do have a threaded muzzle with an 11 degree target crown, and that way we can put a muzzle brick on it. Now my muzzle brake was a little bit larger than the end of the diameter of the barrel, so we actually turned it down to where it looked like one solid piece. Later on that turned out to be a mistake, um, but I thought it looked really good. I really like the flush look of that right there. So now we've flipped the barrel around, we're working from the chamber end now, and we're putting the tenon on the barrel at this point. We're turning it down to start threading to where it matches the threads for the Tika barrel. And here we're cutting through a little bit of smoke action going on, looks pretty cool. And the gunsmith running his dials and keeping everything under control. Taking a look here in slow motion of it just removing just a little bit of material at a time. You got to be very careful when you're cutting the threads on these to get it right. Then we decided it was time to open up the stock now that we had the barrel threaded for the action. And this took about an hour and a half of uh, chiseling away at this thing. We did use a large rasp as well as this little cutting tool right here, but it's a lot of work to get the uh, Boyd stocks opened up for the larger diameter barrel. Now, unfortunately, at this point, we tried to chamber the barrel and we ended up breaking the reamer. There was something wrong with the metal in it and uh, it didn't work out. So I had to order another one and wait a couple weeks for it to show up. Once it showed up, I got it back from the gunsmith. Look how thin that muzzle brake is. We were worried about it. He did warn me that this was going to happen. So after about three shots, it blew apart my muzzle brake. Oh, you hear that? This is from the first trip, shooting a couple rocks about 300 yards away. Man, those 180 grain bullets really smack into those rocks. Here's a close look at that muzzle brake after I blew it apart. So I ordered a JCB Solutions. Those guys are great to work with. I don't know where Bold shot. A little unstable when it this went off. This is my second range trip with the 7WSM. <laughs> this trip went much better. Here's a quick overlook of uh, the rifle. I actually had to repaint the stock because when we were opening it up, we scratched the top of the stock and ruined the paint job. And I kind of wanted to go with something a little more subtle. Taking a good look at that JCB Solutions brake, it looks awesome. The stainless on that dark brown, I think really pops and it looks great. It's a Boyd's Pro Varmint stock. Here's a look at a 7WSM dummy round I use as an overall length gauge. Now I decided to add a bag rider to my stock once I put the heavy barrel out front. It was very uh, unbalanced. So I marked out where I wanted to drill the holes, went ahead and drilled them through, and then I'm also going to put a countersink into these as well. Running the drill press here. So here we can see I put a little bit of a countersink in there. 
so that the screw heads would sit down below and flush so that when it rode across the bag it would recoil smoothly. Starting to put the screws into the stock here and there we have all three installed. I was afraid if somebody grabbed it in that handle area they were going to rip it out if I only had two screws. So here we're mixing up some epoxy and I put a half by half steel stainless steel bar in that inlet of the stock and we glued it into place. I plan on going back and adding a little bit more epoxy. I also put a Picatinny rail uh, for my bipod up front. Now here's a quick overlook of the stock once the bag rider has been installed. Quick look at the barreled action with the scope on it. Another good look at that muzzle brake. I'm really excited to try this one out. It's got the top ports to reduce muzzle rise. Here I'm pointing out that I actually replaced the trigger spring. Old trigger. Goes bang. 20 MOA EGW base. Vortex 30 millimeter six hole rings. These are basic off Amazon. I paid like 20 bucks a ring for them. I'm a SWFA fixed 20 power SS. MOA with an MOA quad reticle. And I also added the Tika butt pad onto the Boyd's Pro Varmint stock. Took me a little bit to get the uh, old hard rubber butt pad off. And here's another good look at the Picatinny rail section. The front screw is actually screwed into the wood and then the rear screw is a bit of a through bolt design so that I could mount my panning and tilting bipod on there. And that's how I put my Tika together guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I cannot wait to go shoot this thing 2,000 yards.